So now hopefully you can all see my screen and we're going to be going through the introduction to kind of Tableau prep and seeing all of the new loveliness that the prep development team have been working on over the last month or so to actually go and release the content to the world. Just while a few more people join, I'll get the boring bit out of the way and done with and I'll talk about myself quickly. So I'm Carl Orchin, I'm one of the two head coaches along with the other guy who you possibly have come across before, Andy Kriebel, uh, Hall of Fame Tableau Zen Master. Um, at the data school, we, we both coach the, the two cohorts that we have in continually. Uh, really both enjoy that challenge of who comes across and how much the team develops. And one of the things that I've been focusing a lot more with the team, um, along with all trips and the data preparation side of things, is Tableau prep. And that's gone quite well as earlier, or sorry, we're now into March, aren't we? Earlier in February, it was announced that I actually made it into the Zen Masters, who I have to say this kind of feels a little bit weird and surreal after being looking up to all of these folks for so long with all of the amazing stuff they do. So I feel very, very humbled about that. Probably the reason why I'm in that collection is this thing called prep and data. So if you've been trying to use Tableau Prep, you've probably come across this challenge that the team have actually been adding so much new rich functionality into the tool. And it's every month compared to every quarter like Tableau Desktop. But every month this new bits or new bits of functionality come into the tool and trying to keep up can be quite a challenge. So Jonathan Allenby, one of the data scholars, um, here's in the, our 13th cohort kind of spoke to me over the coffee machine one day and asked about, you know, is there a regular challenge uh, he can kind of keep up to date with things in Tableau Prep? My answer was no, so let's create one. And that's, that's where prepping data came from. So we have a regular challenge, and uh, you'll find that under the challenge index of the tabs at the top, where we produce a challenge every single week. Six days later, we'll go and post the solution of that. And um, Jenny Martin in the data school is now also producing videos on how to solve those challenges as well. So feel free to go and look, look at all of those at prepandata.blogspot.com. Also within there, I want to point out the how-to index. So at the moment, I'm currently going through the process of writing a lot of content about Tableau Prep. And that's really going from everything from how to start self-service preparation all the way through to the more complex challenges within uh, self-service data preparation and Tableau prep. And the reason why this is, is Tableau desktop for us has given us this huge ability to go and do the work that was previously the domain of specialist teams um, for a very long time. And we didn't really have the same on the data preparation side. So suddenly data being in a clean, nice state became the blocker for us. So we were used to that freedom within visual analytics, but sadly no longer, or kind of never had the ability to do that as much with uh, data preparation tools. And, and Tableau Prep's changing that game for us. They've done it in a very simplistic way. And that simplistic way has been actually reflected over into some quite complex things. That if you code in SQL or are aware of structured query language, which is what, how we interact with most databases, Lots of the functionality that Tableau released in this 2020.1.3 release actually kind of comes from them. It's, it's a mix between what we've found in SQL before and what we've been using within Tableau Desktop. But sadly, you know, we had to wait a little while for these. We had some horrible workarounds, which I'll show you some of those as we go through the session today, uh, just to make you aware of uh, what you might find in other people's workflows if you're picking that up. But we'll show you the new easier ways to do that. But Tableau doesn't really release stuff and leave it in place if it is that technically hard. So that's where these analytical calculations have started to come in and using the actual visual connectors that we're gonna go through today, we can dive in. There is a how-to post on how to make these challenges a little bit easier and almost as a bit of a recap today. Uh, so that's the how to do analytical calculations, um, but we're just gonna dive into that as we go through. So like, just as a quick reminder, yep, the challenge index is there. Certainly last week's challenge, um, challenge nine, is a good one to go and practice some of the functionality you're about to see, certainly in terms of the rank in the new, um, in the new version of Tableau Prep. Just wanna give a shout out to Anton and the rest of the development team. They have released some really good blog posts themselves about this. Uh, so they've got, they've put in place a whole, 
whole load of good support materials and links. There is one new feature that I'm not going to talk about, which is this initial SQL um, parameters section, which when you go and connect to a database, you have the option to do some initial SQL codes up, up at the front. That's not something that um, I wanted to dive into today, but if you did want a separate session on that, happy to dive in and look at where we can go and make best use of that. There is a post separately on custom SQL within the how-to posts on prep and data, so we can always get stuck into that. But hopefully a lot of you will be familiar with what we're going to cover off today, which is level of detail calculations and rank within desktop. But whenever I talk to even long term users of Tableau desktop, um, level of detail calcs are kind of a little bit fuzzy when I ask people how to describe what's going on and what's happening within there. And also the same with table calc sometimes as, as to how they're getting computed. So I thought I'd start this session by actually let's go back and look at what we're actually doing in Tableau Desktop and then how does that actually go and translate over into Tableau Prep, um, just so we're clear on really what's happening behind the scenes there. So the data we're going to use is probably no surprise to anybody who's watched Tableau videos before. I'm going to keep it simple, keep a data set that you're probably familiar with. If you're not, I'll talk it through as we go. But let's go and dive into Sample Superstore. So this is the data set that is um, shared with Tableau. When you actually go and download the software, even in the free version, Tableau Public. And what we're gonna use is the orders table today. Remember this webinar is gonna be recorded. We will share the link uh, via Twitter and the meetup group off the back of this call. So if there's any details that I go over a little bit too fast, uh, feel free to watch the recording or drop me a question at at Data Jedi Ninja on Twitter, and I will do my best to answer it for you. So anyway, let's let's cover off this background information of how to go and work with level of detail calculations and rank quickly within desktop, and then I'll go and show you how to do that within prep. So the first thing to understand about any data set, and this is true of Tableau Prep as well as Tableau Desktop, and where I actually see quite a lot of people make mistakes and, and add to their own confusion almost, is understanding the granularity of the actual data set that we have first and foremost. So here, I'm just gonna go and sort on my order ID. Because whenever I'm in class teaching, the first question I'll ask is often, when we're doing, looking at level of detail calculations and aggregation in general within Tableau, is go and tell me about the data. What level of granularity is it at? And by that I mean, what does each record represent within the data set? If we go and have a look at order ID, which is often the answer I get, the Superstore, it's just one row per order, right? Well, no, we can see that's the case for this first order, number 101476. Uh, Shirley Daniels has just bought something from the Home Office segment. But straight away, I can notice that I've got three repeating order IDs. Now, is this duplication of data? That's what we've got to go and work out. Well, the purchase was made by Paul Gonzalez within Fort Worth in Texas. And actually, when we go through and look at what Paul's actually purchased, we can see it's different items coming from different categories. That's how we're recognizing what the level of granularity is within Superstore. And it's also one thing I'd recommend you do to every data set before you start using it is understand what level of granularity it is. Of course, today we're going to show you something called level of detail calculation. So understanding the level of detail that your original data are is super important. Because if I want to go and answer some questions within Tableau, Tableau Desktop makes that super easy for me. What are my sales for each of my individual states? So I can go and bring out my summer sales onto columns, my state onto rows, then we go and sort those numbers from highest to lowest. And we can see that California sells uh, $450,000 worth of products. Fantastic. But what if I want to work out my percentage of total? Well, I can do that through table calculations, but sometimes I want to go and hard code that number. So what I need to do is if I have my uh, nominee uh, numerator at the top of my percent, uh, the top of my fraction, sorry. So my 457,000, I need to work out my denominator. So the overall total amount of sales that we have within this data set. And that's why we start coming across a couple of challenges within Tableau Desktop. Because Tableau Desktop will go and work out, yeah, well, here's how we break down our total sales of 2.2 million. But it's already broken down to our individual states. 
Tableau goes and aggregates at the lowest level of your combination of dimensions you have within your view. So the lowest level of the combination of however many of these blue data fields that we have kicking around in our view. And that's either on rows, columns, or somewhere within our marks cart. And that creates us some really interesting challenges when we want to not go and work at the individual row level granularity, which was seen as per products within an order, but also not at this level where we're talking about the level that are working every one of our calculations out at the state level. Here I'm working out my total sales by state. So if I wanted to work out my total sales across my data set, well, that's where we're going to go and use a level of detail calculation. If I go and create a calculated field within Tableau, let's just make this text a little bit bigger for you. If that's going to play ball with me, which annoyingly it's not. There we go, a little bit bigger. Then I can go and say, well, let's go and form my uh, total sales. And we start off level of detail calculations with this curly bracket. We nickname it in the data school of Mustachio. So you'll see some blog posts and I'm sure videos by Andy as well that talk about the mustachio. It's our curly bracket. And what we do for a level of detail calculation is we're calling this slightly different syntax. So it's curly bracket fixed. Then what do I want to fix my data set at? Well, actually I don't. So my next part of the syntax is my uh, colon. And then I'm gonna go and say my sum of sales because with a level of detail calculation, we go and fix by some optional levels of dimensions, colon, our sum of sales. When I teach people to analyze and understand their level of detail calculations, I actually say read them from the inside out. So let's do that with this one. So here I'm saying, I want my total sales. And I want my total sales broken down by nothing. So that's what that's gonna do across my data set. It's gonna go and always work out my total sales, no matter how my view is constructed. And that's what level of detail calculations do for us within desktop. They ignore the level of granularity that we're actually specifying by putting our dimensions into our view. Let's go and show you what that looks like. If I bring out total sales, Tableau is still going to apply an aggregation to it. So we see some here, but there's only one sum total sales within my, within my data set. So that doesn't overly matter. And we can see that my total sales are always equaling 2.297 million which allows us to go and create this percentage. If I go and want to see what contribution California is making, so the 457,000 divided by my 2.297 million, that will give me my state percentage of sales or percentage of overall sales. So we can do that by using my sum of sales. Now, because I'm going to use that in this view, that's going to break everything down by state. And I'm going to divide that by, let's use exactly the same syntax we've got here, the sum of my total sales. Now that doesn't, again, ag that doesn't aggregate by state and see how many states we've got in there. We've got 49, so if we go and sum up that 2.297 times by 49 states, it understands that's ignoring the actual dimension within my view, in this case, state. So if I click on OK, if I bring that number into my view, I start to see that I've got 19.92% of sales of my overall business come from California. In New York, 13.53. So that's, that's our background on states uh, and level of detail calculations within Tableau Desktop. Before I jump into prep, I just want to show you table calculations as well. Again, I'm sure you're pretty familiar. I just want to make sure that you're, you're clear in your understanding what I'm going to cover off within prep. Because here on the sum of sales, I can drop down, I can create a quick table calculation based on that sum of sales, and I can go and select a rank. I now see that California is ranked first, second for New York, third, etc. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to bring in my sum of sales again. Here I can see my table calculation is an operation by the little delta symbol on the end, and I'm just going to go and drop that table calculation onto my label. So I can see that we're ranking California first, New York second, Texas third, etc. What rank is doing is it's dynamically using the answers that Tableau has already got for those total sales. Tableau's asked the data source, in this case Excel, it's brought back those total sales, and then it's ranked those in order for us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, we're really heavily using that dimension within the view to actually go and form and understand what we need to do within that. 
And that's actually our big difference from when we're using Tableau Desktop to Tableau Prep. But within Tableau Prep, we don't have a dimension within our view. What we really care about is the granularity of data that's come in from our data source to try and actually understand and work out what we actually want to do with our calculations. So here I've loaded in exactly the same data. We've got our orders data. You can see I've got all of the common um, fields coming in. I haven't renamed everything to try and keep this nice and clean. I've even left row ID in that sometimes gets hidden when you load uh, Superstore into Tableau Desktop. We'll come back to our row IDs later. I'll show you how to actually go and form those now within Tableau Prep. But when we input data, um, again, it's a very similar interface as to what we see with Tableau Desktop. Uh, again, more details on the Prep and Data Blog and how to actually input files if you need a bit more background there. But actually, when we go through and look at our clean step, which is um, where we view data within Tableau Prep, but also where we're gonna do lots of our different operations. Just as a quick overview of Tableau Prep and some of the terminology that I'll use, I'll talk about the flow pane, this pane at the top where we're building our logical flow of how we're gonna go through and manipulate, manipulate our data from our input through to our output. You add additional steps or different, different logical steps that you're gonna go and take your data and transition it through by clicking at the plus at the end of any of our steps. And then we only actually have just a very few choices, which is what makes Tableau Prep quite easy to pick up and get going with. We can add a clean step like I have done to our input. We can aggregate our data up to a different level. We can pivot some of the columns to rows or rows to columns, go and join multiple data sets together or go and union multiple data sets together. We can then stack those common structured data sets on top of each other. Thanks to Anton and the team, we can actually go and write scripting now as well. So if Prep doesn't do something that you really desperately want it to, but you know how to code in R or Python, you can go and build your own scripting to go and do that. Uh, you can also then go and share your script with others in terms of your colleagues and peers. And that way you can really get stuck in um, and solve some really hard challenges. We can also output our flow um, because we probably want to go and use this data within Tableau Desktop or we can actually output it as a CSV if you need to use it anywhere else. We can also insert flows so we can save common steps that we're doing and drop those back into our view as we or into our flow as we go through. You'll also see on my screen that I've got the profile pane. This is really where some of the genius of Tableau Prep comes in. Not only is it absorbing data in, but it's showing me how many of each record I have. So in terms of row ID, we're getting a really consistent view of that. Every row should have one individual row of data, and it does. We even see this on the mini histogram at the side, and this little gray box allows us to go and scroll through those. The gray histogram that you see under row ID, it's boring, every row has one row. But in terms of our orders, we actually see that different orders have different numbers of rows within our data set. This profiling is super useful when we actually go in and look at our different data sets to understand what's going on in there so actually what calculations and cleaning that we actually want to do when you see the difference between the gray bars and the blue that's where tableau is actually going and binning up or summarizing that view to make it easier for us to consume you can always get back to the detail nice and easily you'll see me flicking between that as we go through today and last but not least we've actually got our data detail down the bottom if I really want to understand my four rows for order 100 and 6, 7, 8, I click on that, I can go and actually go and see those rows at the bottom. So hopefully that's a useful bit of background to Tableau Prep, but let's get into the good stuff. That's why you're here. So first of all, let me go and mimic what we saw within uh, Tableau Desktop a few minutes ago. So first of all, I summed everything up by the, or, uh, to the state level. Now, the way that you do that is with this aggregation step within prep. You might find it weird that within normal calculations, the actual sum function doesn't exist. And that's not just because I've formed it poorly, but it's just not in our views. Well, it's, it's there to be called upon, but it's only used within our aggregation steps. And now also within our um, level of detail calculations. So actually, if you're going to aggregate data, you're ultimately changing the granularity and this is what we've always had within Tableau Prep today. That if I wanted to go and work out my total sales by state, I can click on my sum next to my sales and say, yep, I want you to sum up those numbers. We see that we get our total, uh, total overall numbers that we recognize from desktop are 
million. And I'm just going to go and group this all up by state. We can also drag and drop into there. So now I kind of get this quick view. And if I go into my detail, but if I go and find California, a top selling state, we see that $457,000 brought in. And that's just a nice way just to go through and check out what's going on within my data, but also replicates what we had within Tableau Desktop. So that's useful, but the problem you'll see what happens is as soon as I go and add an additional clean step onto the end, all of my other columns has disappeared. That creates us a massive issue when we actually go and want to do some of these calculations. Like for example, if I wanted to go and form my total sales, I couldn't also do that within this aggregation. I would have to go and aggregate again. And this time I just want to go and bring in my total sales, group it by nothing, because I want this to be my total sales. So I can go into prep and rename at the top of that column. Let me go and call my other sales number, my state sales, just so it's nice and clear. Now to use these uh, two columns that I formed in the same calculation, I actually need to go and join those together. So I can drag from the plus or from the actual step up to the top. I don't want to union them. I want to join them together. But what do I actually join on? Well, my sales numbers don't really make sense as something to join on. So what I need to go and do is I need to go and insert a clean step create a new calculation, one and one. So I call the calculation one and it's just gonna have a number one in each row. And I need to go and do the same to my total sales. because so I've got to go and create that common field to go and join these two things together on. At which point this, this starts getting complicated for a lot of people and that's not the aim of Tableau Prep. The, the guy's never intended to, to make us work this hard to do our analysis. I can now go and remove those ones and ones because I've finished doing my join. And I now have the ability to go and say, well, I want my state sales and I'm gonna go and divide those by my total sales. So if I remember correctly, we just call this our state percentage of overall sales, keep the names consistent, click on save. Um, California was about 19.2%, I think. So let me just go and make sure I get into my detail of this, California. Scroll right down to the bottom, you can see it's our last one. Yeah, 19.92%. So we can see that the calculations worked, but that's quite a long way to go about working this out. We don't have that luxury within Tableau Desktop where we just start working everything out by dragging state into our view. That's what we were doing by summing up our state values, first of all, or then having to go and work out an LOD to go and um, find out our total sales, even though we're working at the state level. It was a very different methodology. And for lots of people, that's quite a challenge to kind of get across that. So when we were talking with the devs, they were very conscious that uh, we wanted to add in the level of detail functionality to make everybody's life a little bit easier. And I have to say, they've completely blown me away with how easy they've made this. Uh, let's go and look at how we would form um, our state sales in a completely fresh and different way. So if I add a clean step, you'll see that I've got my state sales already pieced together beautifully. Um, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip this. Let, let me show you how to make rank from within here. That'll be nice and easy. We'll do that and we'll come back to our LOD idea. Because actually rank, this is what's happening within Tableau. Tableau's forming the idea of our total state sales. And then we just want to actually go through and rank these. Now, if you've used Tableau prep before, you'll know that where we go and create calculations quite a lot of the time is not just where it's prompting us on the top bar, but actually on our three dot menu. This is where we get in, it's the equivalent of doing a right click within uh, Tableau desktop, it unleashes quite a lot of the different menu options that we have. But if we go down to create calculated field now, we actually have three options rather than just creating a calculated field for us. A custom calculation, that's very similar to the calculated field windows that we've always seen within prep and desktop. But we now have this option to do fixed and rank. So our fixed LOD and rank will look very similar because the way they come up is in this new visual calculation. And actually we can see how simple things are when we've actually organized our data nicely to begin with. Because I've asked Tableau to do a rank, Tableau's given me this option straight away. Here I can flick, flick sorry, to fix the LOD if I want to. But where we're going to go and set up our values are, we would have a list of our columns. 
uh, over on this right hand side. So I'm going to pick my state sales and I'm going to go and pick how I want these to be ranked. Do I want to do a rank by percentile, by our dense rank? That's where we're, if we have uh, multiple values that are the same. So for example, second place was, was equal. Uh, so we had two different states that had equal second rank. So New York and let's say one other, Tennessee. Then actually, how do we go and treat that? Do we go and give the rank of second out twice? Well, in dense rank, that's where we actually force it to be third. So it would be first, third, third, and then if you've got a unique value next, it would be fourth. So you can actually go and change your type of rank within here. So there's actually no need to do any calculations to get to this point. We can go and say we just want to rank. Here I'm simply saying from the top down, I can go and change that order. So if I wanted to do an ascending rank rather than descending rank, I can just switch my sort order on these values, which makes it super useful. We can also, if we wanted to break down further, if we had more columns in our data set, I could go and break this down even more by our different dimensions. And this is where we can go and create, for example, a rank of our cities within a state. You can actually go back and do that later as an example. I'll see how much time we have left at the end. But setting up the group by is how are we grouping together or another term for that is partitioning our rank. That partition term's useful. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later on. But if I click done now, you'll see that that rank is simply added in as a column. If I go into the detail, I've got my one for California, two for New York, three for Texas, et cetera, et cetera. So that becomes super useful, super easy, and saves us a whole load of work. Previously rank and other calculations that worked across our data set weren't actually possible to do within Tableau Prep. Each row was handled individually. If you wanted to have to go and do level of detail calculations or ranking, there'd be some horrible workarounds where you're duplicating out the data and then joining it back onto itself. Like I say, the team and the Tableau dev team have responded brilliantly to this for us. So let me go and show you an example where we're going to get a little bit more complicated than what we've done before. Let's go and look at creating um, an idea of where we would often use fixed within our um, Tableau desktop view. And that's to go and create something at kind of different levels between where we're actually aggregating and where we're working. Because for me, understanding customer value was always key. I used to work with a lot of customer analytics data, so trying to piece that all together used to be pretty problematic. I would spend a lot of time in uh, SQL, creating aggregated tables to go and look at certain customers' holdings and then putting those back together with other data sets. It became really problematic. So here, I'm just gonna go back to my original data set. I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit more and just go and create our initial um, connection in. Sorry, let me just zoom this back out just a little bit, just so I don't disappear off the page too far. There we go. That'll be a little bit easier. And let me just zoom back in. I love these controls, but they can also drive me up the wall if I'm clicking in and out way too much. So with, with this new clean step, let me go and try and work out my, my total customer value. Because at the moment, Tableau Prep is behaving exactly the same way that Tableau Desktop did. Tableau Desktop showed us that each of our uh, individual values were for a certain order. So if I click into one order, I see that I've got four rows of data coming back for this order because we're ordering four different products within here. Uh, it's four different products, not even any repetition. So I want to not just go and look at this order uh, for this customer. So Nat, I can go over and let's go and search for Nat and see if we can find him. Nat Gilpin, here he is. Uh, we'll see that not he doesn't just have those four rows of data within one order. He actually has lots of different um, orders from all across the country as well. So to actually go and start doing some analysis at the customer level, we need to go and factor this in. We need to go and start to go and look across our full data set to go and create some summaries at a different level of detail to where our granularity is. And again, we're not necessarily within Tableau Prep setting up a granularity by using the aggregation step because that will lose lots of our data out. We want to keep the rich level granularity of data that we've got. We just need to pull together some more summarized numbers. So in this case, let me go and find my total customer 
um, sales values that they've contributed so far. Here, we can actually see we can use our customer ID to do this. So I'm going to go into my customer ID, scroll across a little bit so I can get to my three dots, go down and create this time a fixed LOD. Now, because I've slipped on and driven that from my customer ID, you'll see that customer ID has been brought in. I'll still have the ability to go and select any field I want within my data set, but it's just shortcutting that a little bit more for me. This group by section is that chunk of what we saw in our LOD before we actually went into our aggregation. So if I go and pick up my, um, yeah, total sales will do. So when we looked at originally our, our level of detail calculation, I need to go and specify what my aggregation is and then say what I need to actually go and sum this up by. Here we're talking about total sales, so I summed it up by nothing, but I'm gonna pretty much the equivalent of what I've done is saying fixed LOD, at the customer ID and I'm going to go and pick up my total sales to pick up my customer sales numbers. So within prep what we're doing is we're saying for our customer ID that's the little bit between fixed and our colon then I need to go and say which field I'm using so Tableau can then give me the right aggregations to use with that because there's no point trying to sum up my customer name that wouldn't make sense to do that so if I pick my sales you can see the variation of my sales values. We're starting to see some um, views of, of how that sits and how those numbers are distributed. But here, I'm just gonna want to go and pick up my sum of sales for each of my customers. Click on done. And, oh, actually, I should have actually gone in and changed that. If you ever want to make changes to any of your calculations, similar to what we've had within Tableau Prep before, Go into your changes pane, which kind of acts as your audit log within Tableau Prep. Click on the little pencil symbol. That's going to allow us to go and edit. And let me just change the name of this calculation to be our total customer orders or um, customer total sales. That might be a nicer way of saying that. Click on done. And if I go into my detail now, we'll see that we've got a lot of numbers. 500 or 793. You'll see the number of customers we actually have is 793. We've matched those beautifully. Whereas before, if I look at all of my different sales values, we should see we've got way more sales numbers in there. Yeah, 6,144 different sales numbers. So this is where Tableau's gone and worked at a new level of detail, but it hasn't ripped out all of the other rich detail that we saw happen before when we used an aggregate step. And I think this is gonna be the major piece of learning for somebody who's been using Tableau Prep for a while, that you don't always need to go and aggregate within an aggregate step. You do if you want to change that overall granularity of data, but just be conscious you're gonna lose potentially a lot of rich information that you might wanna otherwise keep. And if you did want to do that, and you wanna keep that information, previously we'd have to go and do that join technique of joining those data sets back together where now I've got my total sales number, but I actually just don't need to go and get rid of all of the other information and rip everything out instead. It's become a lot easier. And how do we use these calculations? Well, we can simply go and create a calculation now that says, well, let's go and look at what each of those product sales contributed to my overall customer total sales. So um, product value per order, for each customer. Love it when I catch myself doing a spelling mistake halfway through typing something. Save that and we'll now see um, where we have customers where their one sale was basically everything. So let's go and find those customers. So for example, Joe Castor Rupert, that one row of data, that one product sale within an order was everything. So it's just one sale of this Wilson Signal Boost Amplifier Kit. Doing analysis like that becomes super useful because I've always advocated that you don't necessarily always need to go through to Tableau Desktop. When preparing data, you can actually find a lot of great answers within your data set already. So if I only wanted to go and look at certain customers whose sales or those individual products have contributed to at least 90% of those sales, we can actually now go and filter down those values and talk about our product value per order for each customer. Is that greater than 0 
So 90% of the orders come from there. And then we can start using this profile pane to actually go and look at what segments that's actually created for. Which cities do those sales happen in? Which products are we actually talking about? And actually, if we sort those, the Canon image is often that product that contributes the most to those sales where we've, we've got kind of individual lines that are contributing quite a lot. Very tenuous example there. The joy of using Supersaw sometimes for these demos, but I've always wanted you to be able to follow along to these. But you get the idea that actually you can answer a whole load of really great questions just within Tableau Prep itself, because we now have this ability to use REC. Um, using LODs work as we've just seen, building in that, that separate level and building out from there, creating our rank. We did that on our sales data earlier. And there's one more type of um, analytical calculation, as we're calling them, that's been built into Tableau Prep. So let me just go and show you where we can go and look at those analytical calculations. So we've got ascending and descending to change those orders of those ranks if you need to. Order by partition, ranks, and row numbers. So order by partition, we haven't really spoken about yet. But you can write these calculations yourself. You don't have to use the visual editor. Some people will like the visual editor. I'm sure some people just like writing those calculations or, let's face it, copying and pasting them from other workbooks where you've got them set up correctly. So let's actually go and do that. Let's, let's build out a calculation that goes and looks at my row numbers. And I'm going to take the example um, within here. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just make this a bit cleaner. I'll create another new clean step connection. And that will allow me to go and look at the order that we've actually got per products purchased in. You can see within my kind of order ID at the moment, it's just the random order that my, my sales numbers are being held in um, within my Superstore data set. There's no logical order there based on our order date. Maybe I want to create one. So let's go and create a, a row number, or let's call it our. Um, sequence of orders and i'm actually going to go and base that on the order date those those orders came in on as i mentioned earlier doing calculations across rows within tableau prep never been never been possible before this is where these analytical calculations are really helping us work across that and the syntax for this is a little bit different you will have seen some blog posts um, early on within um, the beta that was kicking around, where instead of the word order by, you'd have seen the word along. The development team just changed that out because that just made a little bit more sense in all of the testing that they did as they went through this. So what are we going to order by? Well, we're going to order by order date. We're going to say, as those orders come in, let's structure this by order date, colon, and then what uh, function we're actually using. We're using our row number function. So what row numbers is going to do is just literally go and count through those row numbers. Let's see what happens when we actually go and save this to apply it. Whenever you create a calculation within Tableau, prep, it moves it to the left hand side. Uh, you can always go and drag them to reorder them if you want to. But remember, Tableau is just going to uh, drag those in in alphabetical order in desktop uh, split by your dimensions and measures. But if we look at the detail here and we look at order number one, well, that came in on the last day of our data set. Looking at order two, same day, all the way down, and we start to see that we've kind of got the wrong order. So we've gone, our row numbers actually go descending. To change that, all you have to do is go and say what order you want it to happen in, what you want this function to happen in. And the kind of functions you're going to drop into here are exactly what I start to show within our analytical options. You're going to go and use this for row number as we are, but you could also use all of your rank, rank functions within here. And you'll see the explanations as to what those different ranks are doing if you ever need that reminder. So let me save that. And now we'll see that our sequence of orders starts with number one, which is our first order date in our data set, going all the way through increasing as we go. So that's useful. Starts to provide us this kind of understanding of how those orders have come in. But let's take it a little bit further. Maybe I want to know about those, those sequence of orders as they come in through our different states. How would we actually go and create that? Well, I could actually go and drop back into this calculation. And what we do is we wrap this in something called a partition. 
Again, this language has largely come from um, SQL. And this is where we just want to be super careful around how we're using our brackets and our colon to go and break this up. So let me talk you through this. So again, we're ordering by order date in an ascending order and giving it a, a sequential number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're just saying that we're going to actually do this this time just through individual states. So let me go and save that. And I'm just going to go and find my states. Let's go and look at one state at a time. So let's go and start with Alabama. And we can now see that we've got this order that our first order came in on the 7th of April 2016 and working all of our way through. Now this functionality becomes super useful for us because one, it tells us how many orders that we've actually had from each of our individual states. We can see that within our history, miniature histogram on the side. But what we're also gonna have the ability to do is go and then you go and compare those four first orders that came in. Or maybe we aggregate up to a customer level and see who the first customer was. We can go and change this ordering a lot. And that's going to give us a lot more analytical control and the chance to answer a whole load of different questions than what we previously have done, both within Tableau Prep as well as Tableau Desktop as well. So they are our three calculation, our analytical calculations that we've got. We've now got the ability to go and add row number in. And we do that in the way of this calculation. Ordering by something, you're going to go and set a row number in a certain order. You can also break that down, or what we've also seen before is our group by, for each of our states. So for each of our states, based on um, when the order came in, in ascending order, go and sequentially number those rows, please. We've also seen that very similar syntax we can actually use for our level of detail calculations. So we can actually go and type in our level of detail calculations from scratch if we want to. So just in the same way that we have from our um, Tableau desktop days, we can go and say, find my customer details, in this case, customer name, can I go and sum up my order to go and form my customer sales values? Click save, and we're gonna get very similar numbers to what we got from our visual analytics um, view. And also we can use that visual analytics view to go and create our ranks of different things. So whether that be our numbers, our sales, whatever that may be, by going down to create and rank, you could type this as a manual calculation. And I think getting used to those manual calculations is useful because you can see that Tableau is actually writing that for us here. So we, not only can we just set up our visual calculation, but we do have that option to go and copy and paste that calculation into elsewhere if that would be useful for us. It's kind of very much like split within desktop. When you split in the data connection window, Tableau is writing the calculations behind the scenes, but then makes it available to us to then go and edit it and tweak it that little bit further. If it's not behaving the way we'd expect it to, or we want to go and further analyze something in a little bit deeper detail than what we have today. So that's taking you through the, the three that we have. Um, I'm just going to jump back into my Zoom screen just to go and see if I can, see if there's any questions or anything else that's come through. So hopefully that's useful. Um, like I say, if you have got any questions, feel free to go and um, drop them onto Twitter. Yeah, I don't think we actually opened up the Q&A on this chunk. So hopefully that wasn't too painful. Uh, you can drop into the chat if you want to, and I'll stay online for a few minutes. But otherwise, hopefully that's a nice little introduction to some of the new functionality that's come into Tableau Prep. Um, what we're actually looking at in terms of those analytical calculations. They are slightly harder, but just as they have been in terms of table calculations and level of detail cal calculations. So I highly recommend that you go away, spend a little bit of time practicing, getting familiar, slightly different syntax to what we've had before as well, although very similar if you've used Tableau Desktop or SQL. And then we can start digging into there and creating even better, cleaner analysis, and making that data available to others. My major point that I would like to make is just be careful when you're creating those level of detail calculations that somebody knows how to use those. Creating an LOD within Tableau um, Prep is going to be different from creating that within Tableau um, Desktop, just for how the what's actually going to be computed and, and how the aggregation could happen off the back of that. So do spend a bit of time getting used to that. That would be a worthy investment in the time. 
apart from that, like I say, drop some questions into the chat window, or if you're watching the repeat of this, feel free to drop me some questions on Twitter. So that's at Data Jedi Ninja, all one word, all lowercase. Um, and thank you very much for dialing in and listening for those of you who had. So I'll just stay online for one more minute, see if any questions come in. Otherwise, um, we'll end it there. So thank you very much. Cool. No, no overall questions. Uh, a few thank yous coming through. So appreciate those. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy practicing and, and playing with prep. That investment in time is, is definitely worth it. Um, I have personally had some huge time savings already. And also I've been able to enable a whole load of people to do things a lot faster that previously weren't they weren't able to do so thanks for very much for joining like i say questions on twitter or you'll find my contact details on on the data school and the information lab site so feel free to drop me questions if you've got any and um speak to you all again soon with some more tableau prep brilliance probably in about a month's time with the way they go thanks everyone bye